Hey guys, Thunder E here, and today we're gonna to see how the Bose QC45s pair against the AirPods Pro Max and the Sony WH-1000 Mark IVs. So when it comes to true wireless headphones, Bose used to be the market leader for active noise cancellation headphones for years, until the Sonys hit the market with the WH Mark III's, I believe, and took that crown away. So if you guys are joining us for the very first time, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and check out the channel for more videos like this. So in my hands are the WH, sorry. So in my hands are the Bose QC45s, the true successor to the Bose QC35s that a lot of people love, a lot of people love to use to travel. Now, the QC line are meant for active noise cancellation, and uh, yes, they do a good job. Now, when you look at it compared to say the Sony's as well as the uh, AirPods Max, pricing is in between both. Now, the uh, Sony's are priced right now at 299. The Bose QC45s are 329, and the AirPod Max can range between 444 to 549. So, that's where it stands. Now. This has something unique. It's got that very similar styling to the QC35s, but with an upgraded feel. You've got something that has soft leather cups. It's got a top headband that's soft and comfortable, collapsible uh, with itself. Now in terms of just functionality, on the right ear cup, um, you do have your power on button and your Bluetooth sync button. And then you've got your controls on that ear cup as well. And of course, USB type C charging, which should give you about 20 hours or so more in terms of charging. And then on the left ear cup, you do have a uh, headphone jack and a mode button, which switches between your modes. You've got quiet and aware. Now, all that said, it also comes with a case, which is something that all of them have. And when you compare all of them together, both the Bose and the Sony have a solid carrying case that protects your device, while Apple, of course, has the purse, whatever you want to call it. Either way, that's where they stand. Now, when it comes to functionality though, here are some of the different points for all of these headphones and whether the Bose actually stand. So Bose has, of course, the active noise cancellation, which you can quickly toggle with that main button, as I mentioned, and it's got two modes. One is called aware, which is basically just transparency mode, uh, where you can listen to your environment. And the other one is called quiet. Now, uh, this is something that you'll find with all of the headsets here, uh, especially with the, uh, the Apple, you've got transparency, which is pretty good. And you've also got something similar on the, uh, the Sony's W uh, Mark IVs, now WH Mark IVs. Now, when it comes to just pure usability, they're all pretty easy to use, uh, but you can get into a deeper function with the Sony because the Sony has a very robust application. And this app allows you to toggle through uh, between your active noise cancellation levels uh, from, I believe, uh, with a sliding bar. And also you can customize it to match your environment. So you can actually tune that here. So that's where Sony takes the cake uh, compared to all of them. Now, when it comes to active noise cancellation levels, how are they and are they any good? Well, I will say that uh, to me though, the Bose do a good job and they've done a good job in tuning them quite well, but I don't think they match nearly as close as the Sony's or uh, the AirPods Max. I think the AirPods Max are pretty good and the Sony's are good, just as good once you tune them to match your environment, uh, but the Bose come in slightly second, which is fine, which is all good. But those modes there, I think you'll find out that it does do the job, but not just as well as all three. Now, when it comes to audio, which is a very big thing, uh, this is where I think Bose has done a lot of improvements. I think over the years, I have been a big fan of the QC line when it comes to audio because they've been very aggressive with the active noise cancellation. And I think Bose has done a really good job to step it up with its sound right here. And this is where a lot of people would appreciate that mix and balance. Now, that being said, is it better than Apple's uh, AirPods Max or the uh, Sony Mark IVs? No. The reason I say no is because with uh, the AirPods Max, you get a very rich, clean sound with them. And honestly, I think Apple has done a good job, uh, especially at its price point and what you should expect when you're paying $500 for a pair of headphones. 
while the uh, Sony Mark IVs is still the king here because its price point, its range, and also the customized the, the customability within the application does a really good job to customize the sound whichever way you want. But it's bass heavy, you can tune it, you can make it light, you can make instrumentals, whatever you want to do, the Sonys can hit that for you. While with the Bose, you do have a very clean sound stage and it does hit those notes quite well, especially on the highs. Uh, the lows are okay, the mids are solid, but you have nothing to customize that in any range or form. The app, the app itself is very, very basic uh, and the range doesn't extend it much. It does a good job, but in comparison, it's just not as close as the other two. Now, that being said though, what about battery life? Now, battery life here is something that's quite interesting with all of them. I think roughly you're gonna get around the same range with all three, uh, but I think you'll find that the, the bows are about 20 hours or so, while you do have you know, about 24 hours with the Max and a Sony's uh, creep up closer to around that like 28 mark or so. so Again, they're pretty close. I'm not gonna lay anything on any one of them because at least they do a good job for the set amount of time they actually state they wanna do with battery life. Let's quickly listen to a sound sample from each of them so you hear exactly how each one sounds. So you've heard them, they sound good. The one thing that everybody really cares about with headphones, true wireless buds, over ear headphones of course, is the microphone for having conversations. And I can tell you that this is something that Bose has done well with these as well. And I think all three really do a good job. I'll actually put Bose slightly ahead of the Sony. Sometimes I've noticed my Sonys have had just some issues, but in general, all three do well and Bose does a really good job with conversations. No one has had any issues with my conversations with them on the QC45s. And of course, you know how Apple does with their microphones and their headsets. So overall, we've got three headsets here. We've got three different price ranges. And the main question is, has Bose come back to take its crown as the true um, active noise cancellation over the hair king? And the answer is no. I think if you look at all three, you'll find that the Bose do a good job. And if you're a big fan of that QC line, it will satisfy your needs. But if you're looking for something that hits all the marks and also is price conscious, then it's the Sony's. I think the Sony's are the ones that hit the mark well. The AirPods Pro Max are solid all the way. I've said it before, it's just too expensive in my mind. And the Bose just come in with something that are good, but doesn't beat the competition. So if you guys have any questions, any comments about the QC45 or any of these headsets here, let me know and I'll answer them for you. If you think I'm wrong and you think the QC45s are great and the best thing, leave those comments down below. Otherwise guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy the entertainment.